Hello everybody and welcome to Roguelike Roulette. We have switched from Wizard of Legend over to Risk of Rain 2. I put a poll up on my Discord server and basically give people the option to vote for which game should be switched out for Risk of Rain 2 and everyone voted for Wizard of Legend. I mean that series is a great game but obviously um, other games like Dungreed and the Dead Cells DLC are taking more precedent and people are enjoying those a little more and that's all what this series is about. It's been like five or six weeks since we started the uh, Roguelike Roulette series and I said I'd be switching out games kind of regularly every five to six weeks, maybe a little longer um, and Risk of Rain 2 is getting a very, very, very big update in the coming days. It's not out yet but in I think two or three days so for next week's episode there'll be a big update coming out so I really wanted to start this game now and basically I want to do this episode as an introduction episode to the game. I have plenty of hours on this game. I bought it on release. I played it a bunch on release and I've played it a ton since and I really just wanted to get into the game, do a regular episode and kind of cover some things with you. So we'll start off, I'm going to be good playing on my account that's got lots of things unlocked and that's one of the main things I wanted to ask you guys. Should I carry on playing on my save file that has everything, oh well, almost everything already unlocked or should we be starting a fresh save file? Now, there are different reasons for and against. Obviously there's more variety and we can play new, newer characters without having to go through the unlock process on my save file. But obviously a lot of people like watching the unlock process. The only thing is on this game, unlocks can take a long time because runs can be fairly long. So I basically wanted to get your guys' feedback rather you'd if you'd rather see everything unlocked already and just play and have fun or try and see me start fresh on a new save file but maybe not see as much variety in items because it's going to take us a while to unlock and obviously we're only getting one episode a week. So... It could take a little longer. The second thing is, should I play it on Rainstorm, which is the regular difficulty, or Monsoon, which is the harder difficulty? Now, I don't play on Monsoon too often, but it is going to make, make runs a little harder and probably a little more interesting. We're going to have to change up how we play a little bit. Uh, so that's really up to you guys as well. We'll do a normal run on Rainstorm, but that's a good thing to get on the uh, the docket for you guys to answer and next thing is this is the artifact section it says coming soon this is going to be what's added in the new big update coming in a few days we're going to play as the normal character here the commander he has double tap phase round tactical dive and suppressive fire and if you guys don't know what risk Rain 2 is risk Rain 1 was actually a really popular roguelike but it was completely 2d and it was sort of like a 2d platforming roguelike this is the same series but got brought into the 3D world and they changed it up massively. It's got a really cool few systems in it where basically you have to um you have to try and race against time, so to say. As you can see at the top right there, there is a timer there and you can see it's moving along a bar of difficulty. It's starting out easy, but the game progressively gets harder the longer you take on each stage. And another cool thing about this game is you can get the same item multiple times and stack their bonuses. And some of them have really cool stacking effects. So as you see, enemies are going to spawn in and they're going to spawn in like slow, fast sort of thing. Um, they start off quite slowly, but then it speeds up a lot. Uh, and there's loads of different shrines and things I'll try and cover them as we go here. But like I said, this is going to be kind of more of an introductory episode. I'm going to go over towards this thing here because that is a shrine of combat. Shrine of combat is basically you spawn in a bunch of harder enemies for the stage that you're at. And after um, beating them all, you get a considerable amount of money. So we're going to go and do that. Got a big guy here. We use all of our abilities. Don't want to be hit by that big laser beam there. Try and take him out. We do have the ability to deal critical damage. I think it's 5% chance by default. We've got a crit there. We can up that with certain items. I think they're called the lens maker glasses, the ones that we up it with. We'll sprint over here. We're playing as the commando right now. He's kind of the default character. There's other characters that I prefer from this guy, but I just thought this would give you guys a good idea of the sort of default experience. We've got some wisps spawning in. We'll take out these first before we use this shrine. Again, we want to be trying to be fairly quick on this first wall. We don't want to take too long. All right, what we're spawning here. Okay, so we spawned one of these guys. He actually slowed us there. So this is like a champion variant of an enemy. This is an ice variant of one of these little lizard guys. Once we've killed all of these lizard dudes, we should get a considerable amount of money. Trying to combat server. Nice one. So we're on at 113 right now. There's a big guy over here as well. We'll try and get him wherever he's gone off to. What are you doing over there, dude? Buy that at you. That laser's not going to get me. Oh, haha. -ha. Right, so now let's go and try and get ourselves some items. So I did see that over, over down this way, there was an orange chest. So that you'll see various chests around the map. 
Orange chests always contain active items, and we really want one of those as quick as possible. There it is. Let's get that. Only 25, so we've got quite a lot of money right now. And we got ourselves the crowdfunder. Honestly, not a great one because it does require money for us to use. So not, not the most ideal choice for us right now. Got him. But you can see, it also changes the appearance of our character. We'll make our way over here because I did see a big chest um, just about. Where is it? There it is. Th these bigger chests uh, always contain green or higher items. And they can be quite good as well. Let's see what we get. For 50. We got ourselves a Kairos band chance on hitting enemy to strike them with a flame rune. Basically, it'll spawn a little fire tornado on enemies when we hit them sometimes. It's very, very useful. And here we've got like a multi-choice thing. We've got attack speed there. We've got fireworks. Oh, we've got a random one. I'm going to go for the attack speed. Attack speed is always nice. This is literally just going to make us fire faster. Of course, that's great. We actually also have a 3D printer over here. This is another cool thing. You can trade in items of the same rarity. So white quality items. Our only white quality item right now is our attack speed bonus for this, which is bandolier, which is increased damage to bosses. Not particularly the best for us right now, but quite nice. And there's the little fire rune you're seeing there. Look. The good thing as well is any XP that we have left over at the end of the stage gets turned into um, gets turned into XP. Did I say XP? Any HP we have, sorry, gets turned into XP. We have another 3D printer here for this. Enemies that you're standing close to take more damage. And some of these items, like this um, this flame rune thing, is one that we won't have unlocked by default. This is one of the unlocked items. I believe the crowd funder might be as well and unlock. But as you can see, things are starting to get a lot more hectic now. There's a lot more enemies about. Harder enemies and just a lot more of them in general and make our way over towards this little shrine here this is a shrine of chance shrines of chance um basically give you a 50 50 chance of getting an item up to a maximum of two items so we'll see if we can get one there we failed once but they are cheaper which is nice we got one item that's gonna mean we spawn a little thing whenever we level up and we won't play it a third time i only play them three times i don't think it's worth it playing any more than three we'll get some out of this chest here if we get here Cautious slug, rapidly heal outside of danger. Not a particularly good one, but honestly, if we were playing Monsoon, it'd be a lot better. So whenever we're not firing, after a few seconds, we start to get a healing bonus, which is really nice. Also, can I just say how fantastic the music is on this game? One thing about this game that, we will, that I do have to note is... Um, oh, there's a healing drone down there. I'll go get that. Um, the, the games tend to last quite a lot longer than normal roguelikes, so we can end up playing for, for hours and hours and hours, depending on how broken our run gets. So we will see about that. Um, if we... If a run goes past, um, like, I think it's the, the second. So, basically, you go through four, four different stages, and you can loop them after you go through them four times. On your second loop, you can obliterate yourself, which basically gives you a bunch of money and uh, allows you to, like, end the run. We'll, we'll always go for the obliteration when we can, because otherwise runs will just last forever. And then, maybe if we play on stream, we'll just do a run that lasts forever. Okay, so we need to be looking for our boss now. So, we need to move around until we see a bunch of, like, particles in the air. So, let's see if we can find that. So, we've got any chests over here. Doesn't look like it. We'll make our way over this way. Another thing about this guy is he doesn't have particularly fast movement speed. Right. I accidentally used my Q ability there and wasted a bunch of money. I didn't realize it just kept firing. So, I just wasted a bunch of money there, like... I don't know how much, but it was a lot. <laughs> um, right. Doesn't look like we have much up here in the case of viables. Uh, so it looks like we're going to be wanting to go over that way for our uh, portal. Yeah, I can see the particles there. Look, you see that thing there? That's our portal. You can see all those little orange sort of yellowy particles in the air. That means that the, the uh, portal is over that way. So we need to be looking for those. And we're about just over halfway through easy. Six minutes on the first floor is honestly pretty slow, to be honest. Um, we could definitely go faster. We've got ourselves rusty key. That'll randomly spawn little lock boxes around that we can use. And there's our little um, level up banner there. So we can actually stand inside that to get movement speed and attack speed. So we will do exactly that while we're fighting the boss. And we got ourselves the Beetle Queen, which is right here. Honestly, with the increased fire rate while we're in the circle, we should be killing her relatively quickly here. As you can see, she is going down very fast. We're pretty powerful right now. And there you go. First boss done. We do have a healing drone helping us out here, which is nice too. Got to make sure we're keeping on top of our HP here. And now we've got to finish off the teleporter. You can see it's on 31% right now. And we did indeed get an item for that. 
We got the old stealth war kit, old war stealth kit. Uh, basically, that's going to mean that if we take a really large amount of damage in one hit, we go invisible and we can run away for a little bit. Enemy people will target us. Very, very nice. Oh, we got a Luna coin there. Luna coins are like a meta currency that you can use to get certain things in the game. You can use it to unlock some characters. You can use it at special shops. And it carries over between runs. So it's very nice to have a lot of that. As you can see, I've got a lot on this save file. I've got like 400. I've played this game a lot. Right, so we need to kill enemies within this red circle here. And it'll keep progressing that bar. Oh my god. That's a lot of enemies. As you can see, our money's just rising and rising. And as soon as that teleport is done and we activate it, all that money will disappear. And it'll turn into XP and level us up. Which is really nice. Got another war banner there. We got two levels up in the same area. We're just about done here. There you go. And all our XP gets sucked out of us. Levels us all the way up to nearly, nearly level 7. So now, because we're nearly level 7, I'm going to try and find the teleporter as soon as possible and level up on the teleporter. Whereabouts is it? I don't want to kill too many things because I don't want to level up too fast. So let's try and find the teleporter first and then we'll sort of play a game afterwards. And as you can see, obviously because it sucks all of our money away for XP, we start each floor with 0 XP. It's another big part of this game. You've got to kind of start again each floor, which is good. I like that. Right, where are we looking here? So obviously I've recognized a lot of these maps. I've played all of the maps in this game a few times over, so I kind of know where I'm going. The teleporter does spawn randomly each time you play, so there's no guarantee that it's going to be somewhere where you know. I'm going to turn the game volume down just a little bit to like 15. There you go. Don't know if that'll be better for you guys. I can see it over there, actually. And we have two shrines of combat in this floor as well. But yeah, there's various different things we can do to get unlocked. Some of some of them are things like activate these shrines a few times, these the shrine of combat multiple times in one stage. We actually have uh, the ability to trade both of these, which I'm going to, for Will of the Wisp. Will of the Wisp is uh, great. Detonate enemies on kill. The more Will of the Wisp you have, the bigger the explosion radius, and I think the more damage it does as well, actually. So we're going to go for that, and we'll make our way over here. I think they're both better than the items we had. We'll make our way over here and make sure we get some kills here to level up. It just means it's going to make our boss fight a lot easier if we have a, a level up circle over here. As you can see, that little explosion is going, going to be doing real nice for us there. Right. Just got to be careful we don't get hit too much by the champion enemies. They do do a lot of damage. And we're just about to level up. There you go. So, as you can see, the explosion chain reaction is pretty damn nice. It keeps hitting enemies, and they explode, and then they explode, and then they explode, and it gets really nuts. There you go. Good, good, good. We do have the medicate in there. After taking damage, you heal briefly. Not particularly good for us. So let's start trying to open up some chests here, shall we? There's one right there, actually. We walked right over the top of it. So we got ourselves Teddy. Chance to negate damage. The more of those you have, the more chance to negate the damage. Very, very nice. And as you can see, we're doing alright for now for damage. We've got pretty good setup so far. We need to be keep looking around for chests. It's all kind of a, a game of searching around. Another great thing about this game is it has multiplayer, up to four four people multiplayer. And I'll definitely do some videos on multiplayer. I've got a few friends that I play this with fairly regularly, and we all have a pretty good time in it. I'm sure you guys have enjoy seeing some um, some co-op of this game. And maybe even a few of you can get involved yourself. That'd be kind of interesting to do like a Maybe substream where you guys, your subscribers, can come and join and play this game with me. Things like that. That'd be kind of cool. Right. We've got a 3D printer there for... Ooh, yes. I'm I'm trading everything for attack speed. I am trading everything for attack speed. Attack speed is so good. Especially because you can you can have it trigger, like, status effects. Okay, I'm going to keep the teddy bear, though. The teddy bear's really good. I'm going to keep the teddy bear. Right, let's make our way over here. We want to be quick here. There was a Shrine of Combat up this way that we'll definitely take on, but now you can see, firing a lot faster. A lot, lot faster. And 3D printers are kind of the big way to get really powerful in this game. You can find a good 3D printer. Always a good way of doing it. But we can get a few, if we can get a few things that trigger on um, on on hit, there's a few different effects that you can get to, that trigger on hit. That This is going to be really big with the fire rate we have right now. Right, take you out. How are you not dead yet? Dude, stop running away. There you go, got him. <laughs> He's just running away from me. 
Right, where's that Shrine of Combat? Get some money off of that. And there's a chest over there. We'll get the chest first. We're going to be stacking up on items, don't we? What we got here? We got ourselves back, which I'll definitely trade away for um, more attack speed. That's going to give us a small personal shield. But they're kind of broken in this game, and you really don't want them. If you have more than two of them, it, it ruins your, your one-hit kill negation. So you can't be one-hit kill in this game. One-hit killed in this game. You can only be, like, hurt down to a certain amount of HP. But if you have more than two personal shield generators, you can be one-shot killed. So it, it's, it's kind of a, a bad idea to have multiple of those. Unless you're doing a run specifically centered around personal shield generators, which I never do. Okay, this is getting kind of hectic. But we have to kill these guys. So let's keep on trucking. Just got to be aware of our health right now. Oh my god. There's so many champions on uh, a dodge roll right into those. I don't know why. But that was a chain reaction and a half there. That was beautiful. Will of the Wisp is so good. So if we get another green item, we can even trade that for another Will of the Wisp. Ha uh, bigger explosion radius and more damage is, is just going to be so good. The bigger explosion radius is really what you want. And there's our lockbox. So we got ourselves that. And we got a rusted key out of a rusted key lockbox. Are you kidding me? Right, you die, sir. Right, these two should kill themselves from the Will of the Wisp. Nice. Got a few chests there. We got any back here? No. Chests are kind of very spread out this time around here. Should be fine, though. Got two down here. Ooh, another personal shield generator. Exactly what I don't want. So I'll be trading all of this for attack speed. Um, ooh, dealing damage heals you. I'll keep that. That's very, very useful. Right, let's go over to that chest over there. And we'll make our way back around... And trade the rest of these out for more attack speed. Unfortunately, that does mean there's a chance we'll end up trading away the teddy bear that we wanted to keep. But it's, it's a worthy sacrifice, I think. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to leave that teddy bear there and not pick it up. Go and trade away all of our attack speed and then come back and get the teddy bear. Because then at least we still have one. And that's going to be a good idea. It's, it's cool as well with the teddy bear. You can actually negate things like fall damage. So you could fall from a really high height and normally it'd kill you, but instead you just negate it all. Right. So let's pop this open. One personal shield generator gone. Another personal shield generator gone. Our teddy bear's gone there. Oh, our attack speed is so nice. And there's that gone. Oh, this is so good. Our attack speed's so fast. This is so good. And you got to remember, on-hit effects trigger every time we hit enemies, obviously, because that's how they work. And because we have such high attack speed, that's great. And hitting an enemy heals us. So we get insane healing just from shooting at enemies. Just from shooting at enemies, we get absolutely insane healing here. Go on, Will of the Wisp. Get them all. Right. Try and make our way back over towards our boss now. Gotta remember that War Banner. Even though we don't have the War Banner item anymore, that War Banner will still be there. So that's really nice. It sticks around for the entire level no matter what. So we can use that to get even faster attack speed in our boss. Even faster attack speed in our boss. And we can even do the Shrine of Combat over here. I think it's going to be worth it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we've just got a bunch of these guys again. None of them spawn behind us. Good. Alright, get you. Sadly, they weren't grouped up very much, so we didn't get any Will of the Wisp procs there. Should get one here. You guys need to heck off. Wow, that's a lot of enemies. But we've got such good healing right now. And there you go, Will of the Wisp, showing its true potential. Oh my god, this run's so good. This run's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of you might have seen Dangerously Funny play this recently, and he also did exactly what I'm doing now and stacked up attack speed, like, so high. It's definitely the way to play Commander. Different characters play differently. Oh, okay, we've got Greater Wisp. So sometimes bosses will actually spawn as a group of bosses. We need to be really careful here. These, these enemies do a lot of damage. 
Yeah, they, they will sometimes spawn as groups of bosses, as you can see right here. I am going to get the hell away here, because these are really difficult. Right, we need to take, like, we need to take out, like, one that's near all the rest of them. Oh, my God. I'm taking so much damage right now. Come on, guys. Just group up. Group hug. There you go. We'll have wasted a lot of damage there. Healing drones helping us out. Our teddy bear just propped there as well. Even better. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. Most of them are gone now, which is great. Need to make sure to dodge roll them if we can. Let's take out these guys. Watch this one of the wisp prop. Watch it go. Oh my god. Lovely. Right, take this guy out. Stop shooting at me. Got him. Good, good, good. Take out all of these. And we got ourselves the horn. Whenever we activate our active item, we get a burst of attack speed. That's going to be good if we get a better... Um, a better active item. Unless we can trigger it on this. No, we can't. It, this doesn't work. It doesn't trigger it, sadly. Oh, we got a chest that we didn't get before. Nice. It's a rusted key. Okay, I'm going to go trade that rusted key away for more attack speed. I've got to. I've got to. I know we're on hard already. We've, we've spent way too long on this level. There's a big chest here as well. And you see, <gasps> no way there's a... One of these as well. Oh my god, I'm trading that for the Will of the Wisp. It, it could trade away our healing though. It could trade away our healing. It's, it's quite risky. Ah, oh, he got rid of our teddy bear, god damn it. It's quite risky this, but I'm gonna go for it. Nice one. Nine attack speed this early. Yeah, we missed out on a, on a shrine of... Um, I can't remember what they're called now. Uh, but it basically, it's a, it's a shrine that makes it so that two bosses spawn rather than, like, one... Well, two sets of however many bosses you're going to get spawn rather than just one. Um, and that means that you can get double the amount of items, which is really nice. So let's let's risk this. Please don't take my thing away. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Oh, no. It took it away. Okay. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Sadly, we lost our good item there. But we now have five Will-O-The-Wisps and nine syringes. Kind of insane. We're 20 minutes in, only just leaving the second floor. That's pretty bad in terms of timing. We definitely want to be on the third floor like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> no, not, not 10 minutes ago, about 5 minutes ago. Wait, I didn't pick up that, that lock key. I didn't even pick it up. God damn it, I traded that away for no reason. That's very annoying. So we've got to be careful now because we don't really have any sustain in terms of healing. I'm really annoyed that I missed that lock key then. Really not what I meant to do at all, is it? Not what I meant to do at all. Alright, we'll try and get this here. Great, a wisp spawning there. As you can see, certain enemies start to spawn as regular enemies rather than just bosses. Including actual bosses. But We're taken care of. We've got enough for an active item now. We definitely want that because we're not using our other one. These guys are going to be problematic. Will of the Wisp, go! Oh my god. Will of the Wisp. It's incredible. Um, cleans all negative effects. That's not too bad. Right. Where's our teleporter? Let's have a little look around, shall we? There's a chest here. We'll use that. Really? It really, really wants me to have the rusted key. It really, considering it doesn't very, it doesn't even stack that well, but it really wants me to have it. Where's this big guy? I can hear a big guy. See that. Fireworks, whenever we activate something, it'll fire off some fireworks that'll hurt on enemies and do damage. They're not, it's not very good unless you get it stacked really high, then it becomes amazing. Right. 
Keep going. We've got another active item here. I'm actually going to pull that as well because we could get a better one here. Yes, that's lovely. Heal on use. Very, very nice. Right. All you kill each other. Look at that chain reaction, baby. So good. Sticky bomb's very good. On hit, we have a chance to stick a sticky bomb to enemies. And of course, we are hitting enemies a whole bunch right now. So that's going to trigger a lot. There you go. We got him with that one. Another chest here. We got ourselves micro missiles. Chance to fire a rocket. That's good. Unfortunately, the, that does not scale with our attack speed at all. So we found a teleport here. Take a look up here first. Probably get a few more chests going. Right. Let's keep it going. Let's keep her going. Up here. Take you guys out. Nice. It's just so much damage. Just so much damage. We got a Luna coin there. Don't exactly need to pick that up. Dropping a healing orb on kill isn't exactly the best for us right now. That's nice. We get to use our um, right click ability more often, which is lovely. And that. Oh, yes. Lend me her glasses. Hi, your chance to crit. That's great. Okay, let's move down here. We've got one of the like, little roulette wheel type items, uh, dispensers here. Basically, you press it and you've got to click on the item that you want when it appears. Oh my god, a Will-O-Wisp is so powerful right now. It's insane. Make our way just down and get this. This is a little pod full of money. I think it was about 50. Uh, no, not even close to 50. There you go. There he's died there. Right, just keep going. I love how, I love how our character looks. How many needles are in his leg? Right, so... Yep, I want it. Heal over time. Activate, send to an ally. Basically, this is just because it's passive health regen. Very, very useful. Immediately saw that and wanted it. Better than having to worry about pressing the healing. Just having active health regen is going to be really, really good for us. Got a bull. He's only spawned on this floor. Let's take this guy out. This guy shouldn't be too hard. Still can't afford this. Come on, enemy spawn on me. Quickly. Come on now. What are you doing? The enemy coming down here, I can hear him. There you go. And go hoof. Nice. Go hoof means that we can run faster. Definitely useful considering we are very slow right now. Let's move all the way over to our teleporter and go and activate that. We're about ready. We're about ready. But yes, please do let me know what you guys think of this game and, and all the uh, all the stuff that I said in the beginning. Let me know when like how you think I should play this. I really want you guys to enjoy this as much as I do. Take care of you. Right. Teleport activated. What boss we got here? Okay, we got the Imp Overlord. We shouldn't have too much of a problem with this guy. I think there's two of them though, isn't there? Oh no, it's just the one. Just the one. Should be fine then. He does apply bleed effects. That is going to be problematic for us. Oh no, oh no, oh no. I might die here. I'm dead. <laughs> oh my god. I thought we were going to be okay there. We, we had a problem there of having just way too little healing. I, I should not have risked it and traded away that, um, should not have risked it and traded away that healing on hit effect. That was, that was very good for us. I really should have just played normally. And of course, Will of the Wisp is only good if we're killing things. So, maybe I should have been focusing more on the enemies around the boss to deal damage to him. That would have been a better idea. But either way, yes, please do let me know what you guys thought of this, uh, of this video and of this game for, um, Roguelike Roulette. I hope those of you that were liking the Wizard of Legend, uh, series aren't too disappointed with it being filtered out of rotation because it will come back uh games that get taken out of rotation for roguelike roulette are not gone forever there is a chance they'll come back so do not worry about that yes i hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of roguelike roulette and the first episode of risk of rain 2 we'll be coming back next week with the artifacts update really really good update coming with a lot of new stuff i'm really excited for it and i'll see you guys then